Friends, it's that time. These are my bikes. There's 14 of them in here right now, and they're all a little different than one another. But they all have one main thing in common. None of them are particularly remarkable. None of them would be considered set up or suited for, say, an elite athlete to go and compete on them. Whether it's a compromise on a brake setup here or a temporary part there, maybe just some wildly outdated components sprinkled in. These builds never start with the best and never really become the best. And in my mind, that kind of makes them the best. I know there's an argument about quality over quantity in here somewhere, but I'd take my diverse, capable fleet of machines here over any one $10,000 Trek fuel any day of the week. See, I'm not an elite athlete. So I don't need the equipment that an elite athlete needs. What I am is a person with modest income, uh, the curse of a million different interests, and an unwavering understanding of what it is that I like or think is cool. So, because I've got all these interests and want to do all these different things, I need to be really smart with how I stretch the money that I have out. I think the latest, the latest assembly of a bike, Mr. Relatable, my latest full suspension machine, is probably the best example of how I've made that work so far. This is a steel single pivot frame made by Marino in Peru specifically designed with low standover in mind to achieve this look. Kind of reminds me of like a grown up BMX with the smaller steel tubes in the frame and those big pan eraser tires. I love that look. I built it up with parts that I had from old bikes that I've since retired along with a borrowed fork from my friend Dan. I'm gonna have to replace that eventually. But I'm completely in love with the look of this build and the way it rides but it does have one problem. Unfortunately, this thing does have an NX, NX rear derailleur on it. And uh, honestly, like SRAM, the way that your SX and NX rear derailleurs work is unacceptable. It's inexcusable how bad they are. They shift like absolute poo poo, terrible garbage, potato, awful. So I'm probably going to steal the GX trailer off the Pink Panther so that this bike actually works 100% perfect. This is, uh, this is my BNX. A Sunday Discovery frame, I don't think they make this anymore, made it to an eclat fork, both sitting in the middle ground of BMX geometry. Chain stays are not too short or too long. The fork rake hardly aggressive in any direction. It's just a wonderfully well-rounded BMX that works for the diverse riding I do with it. I run my bars cut down a little bit, down to 27 and a half. I run a gyro rear brake, left side drive, pretty typical stuff. Honestly, BMX has always kind of been my North Star. If ever you are curious watching this channel, where did Eric get that idea from? You can pretty well uh, always be correct in saying it stems from one of these in one way or another. My, my life revolves around this type of bike forever and always until death do us part. In saying that, more bikes stemming from BMX, I think. Like the Trasher Bash build. This started life as a Norco Rideau that was abandoned in a ditch. It got stripped, painted, and assembled as an upright BMX cruiser commuter style bike. The whole build kind of working around those surly sunrise bars. 
my commute to work is 30 steps into the backyard to this garage, so I don't really do much commuting with it. 2900 BMX cruisers, like they exist, but of course me being me and the way I am, I wanted to build my own instead of just buying one because buying things costs a lot of money up front. Building things costs even more money over time. And that's just the way I prefer to do things. This thing is gonna lose some parts uh, very, very shortly, within a month, like this month. So we'll retire this bike as well. Speaking of retiring, another bike, another uh, bike that's gonna get retired, not because we're stealing anything from it, but because the actual production frame is coming, is the door. Last year, Poseidon and I embarked on the journey of getting a hardtail mountain bike into their lineup. And I wanted to make something similar to the aggressive hardtail trail bikes offered by more expensive brands at a price that won't make you faint. It sits here built up with a fork that's about an inch too short axle to crown wise. I'll fix that later when we build up the new frame. And in my opinion, some pretty tasteful upgrades from what the stock build will be. The Panracer tires took the look of the build to an entirely different level right out of the gate. And that perfect line from the top tube to the seat tube is a design that I really, really love. Tracking says my production color frame, like with the changes that I've made to it, frame should be here on the 4th. So expect a video taking all the parts off of this, changing some stuff around onto the production frame uh, around then. That doesn't mean that's when the bike is ready. They're still in production. I just happened to get one of the first ones. That's the lucky part of me. It's, uh, it's a little bit cold in here. So I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna rapid fire through the next, uh, I don't know, six or so. If you want more information on them, let me know in the comments, but also there's lots of videos about them. My Dirt Jumper is a 2011 Giant STP with just about everything swapped out. This thing is set up as similar to my BMX as I felt I could get it to try and make switching between the two as seamless as possible. My awesome painted track lacrosse bike is a little neglected having donated a few parts to get some of the bikes that I sold last year going. So I need to give it some love, give it some parts and go play with it again. It's always a fun bike to ride. And then the Trek 8500 build is an agonizing project because it's sitting with a totally wrong fork on it. And one year ago, I put in an order for a custom segmented fork that we're still waiting on. The bike hasn't changed since last year and I don't wanna ride it with that long fork in there for fear of hurting the head tube. So it sits and waits. Just us coffee roasters were sponsoring this build and I feel like an absolute jerk for having not gotten more out about it. The cynical of you might look at this currently incomplete mountain bike and wonder how it could possibly be preferred over a $10,000 super machine. The answer is because I got the sizing wrong and it was nowhere near a financial liability to make that mistake. I'll dismantle the bike, sell the frame, and order one with a more appropriate numbers for what I want it to do. And I'll just put these parts onto it. Imagine if I made that kind of sizing mistake with a way more expensive bike. Brutal. And it's okay if you don't understand. Speaking of things you might not understand, this thing, I still have it, or maybe the bizarre single speed setup on my otherwise stock Redwood. It's still set up that way now. Okay, okay, it's cold, but I think we're making pretty good time. Um, I think we're late enough, like far enough in the video now that uh, if you're still here and you're new here, you really should subscribe. Like. Doesn't this look like the M&M's NASCAR? Who's that, Kyle, is it Kyle Busch? My Vigorelli I think is pretty self-explanatory. It's loud, it's got a super long stem, low bars. It just looks cool. It still has its temporary, just, you know, for now wheels with formula hubs, Mavic Open Pro and Open Sport in the rear rims. Still waiting to build those uh, race day carbon wheels. It's been a few years, it'll happen. E-bike? I'm a big fan of this e-bike because it just kind of doesn't really look like one. It's a Ride One Up Roadster V2. 
but I've swapped out the stem and bars along with the belt drive that was on it. The gearing was just a little too tall for all of the uh, undulating terrain that we have here on the east coast of Canada. Swapping to this gear ratio just does a way better job of preserving some battery life and extending the ride a little bit. Okay, I think that's just two more left. I'll address the GTMX. Uh, it's just taken apart in the basement. I didn't want to bring it up. Let's go with the one drop handlebar bike with gears that I have right now. The Ronster Cross. Ronster Cross hasn't really gone through any changes other than a set of carbon wheels because I sold the LA and the person who bought it didn't want the wheels or any other parts. So I put these wheels on the Ronster Cross. Just that's it, this is the end of the story. That's, that's all that happened. Okay, okay, I think everyone's familiar with that. That just leaves this. This 1993 Specialized Rock Hopper we call the Grouch because it's old and retro grouches are a real thing and I don't really like retro parts. So I thought it would be funny to call it that. Um, there's not really anything special about this thing. It's got some cool parts on it, but nothing you couldn't do yourself. I don't really know why it gets all the attention it does. Probably the green gravel kings, but I literally just copied that from someone else's bike that I saw on the internet. It was green tires on a stump jumper. And yeah, I just stole the idea like I do everything else. Yeah, those, these, everything kind of surrounding me right now, they're my bikes. They're the bikes that I own, the bikes that I built. They're all built to kind of fulfill every single thing I need them to do without going too far above and just being really smart with every uh, financial choice I make with it. I think a lot of times when I talk about this subject of like owning bikes and, and having numerous bikes that are all well within my means, it comes across as like punching up at, at like people who own super expensive bikes. Um, but really what I am trying to get across is just like owning things and making purchases within your means. Like don't go completely broke to own something that's gonna be like technologically impressive to uh, say another rider or someone on the internet, whatever. Um, unless, you know, that's really what you want. But uh, me personally, I'd rather just own a bunch of capable for my level of skill bikes in many different disciplines. I can come in here and if anyone asked me to go ride 80% of the disciplines of bikes, I could go do them. I would have something in here that is uh, appropriate for doing that. I don't have a trials bike, I really want one. Um, I don't have like a recumbent or any of that stuff. But because I didn't put all my eggs in one basket, I can have numerous, numerous bikes especially because I've built them over time. So I don't know, typical trope for me, don't get caught up on owning the nicest stuff. Own something that you're comfortable with, that you can afford, that you can afford to fix, that uh, you know is well within where you feel you need to be. And if you feel you need to keep up with the Joneses, uh, that's great too, I guess. What would you choose? One crazy expensive bike or a bunch of Ones that you can do all sorts of different things with.